Hey people, today I'm going to take these 55 gallon drums and I'm going to, this one had uh, is, is full of used motor oil that I heat my shop with and I've got a bunch of them around here. And I'm going to use a new technique or an old technique or my technique or however you want to call it. And I'm going to use a method to pump these out because this thing here weighs about 500 pounds and uh, kind of hard to move around. So these these drums have a bung in them that uses a two inch iron pipe thread. Okay, so I mean if you can't find one of these caps or one of them, you can always put a cheap dollar fifty clean out plug on them. And on the other side, they use a three quarter iron pipe thread size too. Most people already know that. So what I'm doing is I'm going to put an adapter in here for air pressure and then over here another set of adapters with a reducer where a three quarter inch pipe goes down in here almost to the bottom and it will pump it will pump out using just a little bit of air pressure with a valve over here to control it because you don't want to over pressurize these it will bust their seams I'll show you what we got going all right now what I've got here is this is all the materials that I'm going to need to do this job with this is a three quarter street 90 street L and this is a three quarter by quarter inch iron pipe adapter that's going to go into the end of this and i'm going to have a, a quarter inch uh, brass fitting a quarter inch brass pipe nipple is going to go into that then a valve and then i'm going to put an air inlet on it right here okay now over here on the pvc side i have a reducer pressure fit that's to go with this two inch male adapter pressure fit and this will glue into this and I'm going to take this stepper bit right here and flip this over you see it's got that little stop in it for the pipe I'm going to flip that over and I'm going to drill that out just to where it gets me down to where that's removed now the reason I'm doing that is because of this this piece of pipe will fit inside this just fine it will fit inside this just fine but what I need to do is I need to reduce it down so that it will fit through to this 90 now this is a 3 quarter inch 90 and this is a 1 inch see 2 by 1 if you can read that right there 2 by 1 inch however a regular PVC 90 this is a threaded one, you see that purpose here in just a second, and this one here, but it fits very snug into that. Now you're gonna have a clean side and you're gonna have a side with some lettering on it. If you have to, you can always take and grind that off, but the PVC glue, it'll glue right in perfectly and it'll hold very tight. So once this has been drilled out a little bit to where this pipe will slide through, the pipe will go in and then glue into that socket that'll be down inside this fitting. This fitting, going in here screws into the top we'll do it in a few steps and you'll see what I'm talking about all right now what I've done now is I've drilled this out a little bit it's a little rough I'd clean it up but that way it'll fit over this piece of three-quarter pipe freely now a lot of these will fit but they'll fit real tight you got to kind of tap them on but this I wanted to have a little room so I got something to work with now my next step is to glue this fitting to glue the fitting into this right here we're gonna glue this into here glue this one into that and then we'll go to the next step all right now I've assembled this and you can see there's a socket in there that the three-quarter pipe that'll be dropping down in the tank is in and I built this to where it's got a slight offset this is this will turn thread into the tank or the uh, drum just fine and what I have here is a three-quarter thread iron pipe to hose fitting right there okay and that's going to go into this because I bought a 90 it has threads in it on one end and it's a glue socket on the other so let's get that in there all right so now this is installed on there and now you can put a hose water hose or whatever and it's even threaded on the inside in case you want to put a different adapter all right now what we're going to do is we're going to take this over to the drum and we're going to screw it in to the top of it and it will thread right in regular two inch iron pipe thread it will thread right in and you just thread it in because this is a tapered thread so you 
just want to thread it into its kind of snug and to where your fitting is off to the side there where you can hook a hose to it so typically about five solid turns and there it is right there now i can hook my hose to it and that's well sealed right there all right now let's get that next part all right now the next part is going to be putting these parts all together just like you see right here and that valve will control the air that's going to shoot down in there the last part is going to be putting this piece of pipe with this 90 in it all right now i've removed this back out and i've made up my air inlet part and i went out there to the drum and i measured from the bottom to the top to where it would make fitting in the side inside of this which is just basically measuring from about this lip right here down to the bottom of the drum and then taking away a half inch and then cutting installing this on in the pipe measuring it and then cutting away that half inch so it has a little play in it now what we're going to do is we're going to glue this into that fitting there and it's going to glue into this 90 right here and make it a solid joint so it's airtight and these plastic fittings will remain fairly airtight on that drum out there and you don't have to worry about anything other than being very careful how you admit air if you have a regulator, I suggest you put an inline regulator and set it at about 8 PSI. That helps, and I might show that, um, but right now we're just building this. All right, when you glue yours up, you see I have this alignment? I have that alignment so I'll know that when I, when I spin this pipe into place so that I don't end up with this fitting up against the wall of the drum, I'll be able to adjust it a little bit so that it's off of it. But this is how I do the alignment so that I can have that. That 90 is just for the purpose of having something it'll spin on easily down in there in the tank. And it helps you uh, pretty much have a stop space where you stop, you know, pumping it out at. You can't go all the way down to the bottom with this process, empty the drum out. However, you can make it easy enough now to tip the drum and pour the rest out. And that's what this is. Get your first 52 gallons out. The last three will probably be stuck in there. But that's how this works. You can use this with water, oil, anything that uh, will flow. All right, now we're out here back at the tank and this is going to go in by just slipping it, you see, slipping it into the hole. It'll go down and this is full of oil, use more oil. And this one will go in by simply threading it into place, just like a regular three quarter threaded pipe would go in. And these are not exactly deep threads, but being that the pipe is tapered, it will lock into place and you can just tighten it hand tight i put my airline off to the side same thing again with this you're just going to tighten it up hand tight be careful with these metal and plastic thread combinations that you do not cross thread so put a little down pressure on it and you'll get it in there real nice all right so now that's in there come around good and firm and i can hook my hose to that let's get a hose for that all right in my case i am using just what's an old washing machine hose to cut the end off of it and we're going to hook air to this see how well it works now if your drum has a few cracks or whatever in it you might take channel locks and pinch it uh this one over here might be damaged but apparently not they don't look like it's leaking and um i've been a bunch of my parts laying everywhere on it i think this will be a success all right now i've got this all set up and I've got an air line to it. I've turned my regulator down back at my compressor, but I can also control volume with this valve. And we're going to just let a little air in. You don't want to let too much. And it'll start pushing the fluid out. If you see your drum start to bow a little bit, you need to stop. Once you get flow, you can then start pumping out. And this will allow you to remove oil or other thick liquids. You see? If I see a little bow, I want to cut it back. Let the bow drop. So if I see this bow, I want it to drop a little bit. I can hear a few little leaks in the seams. I'm only putting about 10 PSI max in it but you'll see right there that it pumps it out. So no more buying those uh, pumps that don't work. I do believe I have one. I have one of these. It lasted just a few times. 
Have one of the old uh, hand crank pumps. Didn't last very long at all. Pardon this big, huge pile of garbage here. But winter's coming and it's time to pump it out. It flows pretty good. I'd say probably about five gallons a minute is the best I can get out of it. Just added about another three pounds of pressure, PSI's, and now it's coming out a little faster. So this is very thick used motor oil. Uh, about a 1540 weight in here from old diesel trucks and this is going to my heating unit so that's how you do it pretty cheap um, grand total of all these different items uh, was roughly about $15 and I can pump this out on my own you use one of these to set your pressure so you'll be able to kind of feel it put it in there and squeeze it and feel how much air is coming out kind of give you an idea where to set your regulator you want to set it for under under 15 psi don't don't go over 15 psi on these because they will rupture don't ruin your drums all right not bad pretty good coming out looks like we're pumping i got about a half gallon in there this is a six gallon jug and you can continue to raise up your pressure to your safety safety rate. And I hope this helps. Anybody who wants to empty out these old drums or anything else, and you don't want to ruin a pump, and you don't want to have the mechanics of a pump, um, just put a little tiny bit of air pressure, that piping system, and you can pump one out. You do not want to go over about 10 PSI. 10 PSI is all you'll be needing for this, so you can monitor this. If you see any kind of swelling or anything of the drum, you want to go ahead and shut this off immediately. Let it bleed down on its own. You can pop this loose and let the air pressure off. Be careful, you might spray something out. Typically, 3 to 5 PSI will empty one of these pretty quick. So as you can see right now, this one's getting pretty full. Um, this is a 6 gallon jug. It's a uh, Kim jug, 6 gallon jug. And, um, it won't it won't take but about about eight times it won't take but about eight times to use this jug to empty this to where I can tip it over and empty the rest of the, empty the rest of this out. So keep an eye on it. Don't let it bow. Two to five psi, six seven is pretty safe. If it's a real old drum, you want to keep it down as low as you can and just let it barely push it out. You're putting air pressure down against the load of the oil or material that's in there and slowly pushing down, so don't rush it. All right, and this works perfect. Pretty simple, 15, 20 bucks. You got yourself a pump you can use on everything like this forever.